Good afternoon, students. Welcome back. Uh, in this segment, we shall talk about completing the square method part two. This is actually part two. Yeah. So the first one we did was part one. So uh, this is like part two, whereby we shall actually solve the quadratic equation by completing the square method. Okay, so before you continue with this video, I would like you, it is highly recommended that you view the video segment, the first part, part one, okay, whereby we had to add some things to make it a perfect square. All right, number one, let's begin x squared minus 2x equal to 24. Good. This was, you know, something we did in the earlier part. So... We just have to put it this way first. Then the next thing is, what do we add to both sides to make it a perfect square? We have to do that now. And that is now x squared minus 2x, of course, plus, you know, square of half of the coefficient of x. Okay? Half of the coefficient of x is negative 2. The coefficient of x is negative 2. One half of it is negative 1. Square it negative 1 all squared. And whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right. So I add to both sides the square of half of coefficient of x. So this was where we stopped. What we kind of did in part 1. So it's good for you to look at part 1. Now, this automatically tells you that this is x minus 1 all squared. Just like I explained in part 1. Okay? And this will be 24 plus Negative 1 all squared is 1. So x minus 1 all squared is equal to 25. And right here, you can now use the square root property. You can now use the square root property once you now come right here. So you take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. And that gives you now... Of course, if you take the square root of both sides, you see that square root of x minus 1 all squared is now plus or minus square root of 25. Now, I will tell you why. You might ask me, why did I have to put plus or minus square root of 25? Let me explain this. When we, of course, the explanation also was in the video on using the square root property. When we do square root of 25, it could be plus or minus 5. Whenever we put the square root sign, it's good, we put, it's good that we put plus or minus. Because plus 5, it could be plus 5. 5 times 5, 5 times 5 will give you 25. Then minus 5 times minus 5, or you can say negative 5 times negative 5. It means the same thing. will give you 25. So anytime we put this, we have to put the plus or minus square root of 25. Now, we only put it on the right-hand side. I know some of you might ask me, why don't I put it on the left-hand side? No, we don't put it on the left-hand side because what we want to find actually is the variable x. That is the, and what we want to find. We don't need to come and start putting plus or minus x. We, what we want to find, we don't even, how are we going to put plus or minus that? We don't do that, okay? So this will give you x minus 1, equal to plus or minus 5, right? And in this case, your x will now be 1 plus or minus 5. You know, this plus or minus, now, there's something that, you know, you can open up, if you are confused here, you can open up the parentheses x minus 1 to be plus or minus 5, and then you come over here, and then x will be 1 plus or minus 5. We don't want to say plus or minus 5, then minus 1. We don't want to do that, no. When the negative 1 moves over here, it becomes positive 1. And it, put it in front of the plus or minus 5, in front of the sign. That's the way we solve it, okay? Now, x will now be either 1 plus 5, or x will be 1 minus 5. So x will be 1 plus 5 is what? 6, or x will be negative 4. So we have that our x is 6 or negative 4. And then we can check it, although the question didn't say check, 
but we can just check to make sure. 6 squared is 36. 36 minus 2 times 6 is 12. 36 minus 12 is 24. Then negative 4 all squared is a 16. 16 plus 8 is 24. I think I'll just write it. So I'll probably just do this one for the checking. Check. We write the main problem. x squared minus 2x equal to 24. Left hand side. Right hand side. Left hand side is what? x squared minus 2x. Right hand side is what? 24. Now if we have our x equal to 6, this will be 6 squared minus 2 times 6. So this will be 36 minus 12, which is what? 24. So 24 on the left, 24 on the right. You can dance, right? Then for the, for the negative 4, for the negative 4, left hand side, x squared minus 2x, right hand side, 24. When x is negative 4, it will be negative 4 all squared minus 2 times negative 4. So that is 16 plus 8, and that is 24. 24 left, 24 right. You can dance again. Okay? And that's number 1. Alright, let's, uh, I will be a little bit fast so that we can kind of get this video short. Number 2, we have x squared plus x equal to 12. So it's in the right form, we put the constant on the right hand side. Right? So let's say, what do we have to add to both sides to make it a perfect square? Coefficient of x is what? 1. 1 half of it is what? 1 half. Square root is what? 1 over 4. So we have x squared plus x plus uh, 1 over 2 all squared equal to 12 plus 1 over 2 all squared. Actually, that's, you know, uh, we have to add 1 over 4. Square of half of the coefficient of x. So this is now x plus 1 over 2 all squared equal to 12 plus 1 over 4. Right? Watch your videos on adding and subtracting fractions. Add and subtract fractions. Watch the video on that. So this is x plus 1 half all squared equal to, this is 48 over 4 plus 1 over 4. So x plus 1 half all squared equal to 49 over 4. Right? So x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus square root of 49 over 4. So x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus 7 over 2. So x will be equal to negative 1 half plus or minus 7 over 2. So x will be negative 1 plus or minus 7 all over 2. So x will be, because the LCD is 2. The LCD is 2, so that's why I put down 2. So this is negative 1 plus 7 over 2, or x will be negative 1 minus 7 over 2. So x will be 6 over 2, or x will be negative 8 over 2. x will be 3, or x is negative 4. And that's 3 or negative 4. And if you check it, it's pretty much. Yeah. 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12. Negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. Yay! Alright. Number 3. So we can solve this fast and get it done. Completing the square. That's, that's interesting. Number 3. We have x squared plus 4x minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. This doesn't look like the form we've been using, right? doesn't look like that form. We've got to put it in that form. ax squared plus bx equal to negative c. Equal to negative c. Okay, from the first video. So put this guy over here. We have that x squared plus 4x is equal to 2. We move that. 
So it looks like this. And it's still like squared, so that's good, we are good. So what do we have to add? What is the equation of x for? One half of it is 2, then square 2. So this will be x squared plus 4x plus 2 squared equal to 2 plus 2 squared. So this is x plus 2 all squared equal to 2 plus 4. x plus 2 all squared equal to 6. x plus 2 all squared equal to 6. So x plus 2 equal to plus or minus square root of 6. Plus or minus square root of 6. And we can break 6. We can simplify 6. Another thing is, please, watch my video on simplifying radicals. My video on simplifying radicals. So, but you can simplify square root of 6. So x will be negative 2 plus or minus square root of 6. Right? So x will be negative 2 plus square root of 6. Or x will be negative 2 minus square root of 6. I'm going to leave my answer like this. But if you have your calculator, if you want to find the exact answer and check it, that's fine. I mean, if I start checking this now, some of you might get mad. Because I, it will lead me to a radical equation. <laughs> A radical equation that by the time I start doing some things, you might not like it. But we can check this. It is possible to check it. Give it a try as a challenge question. Give it a try. All right, number four, we go, we go, we go. x squared plus 7x minus 1 equal to 0. Right? Okay, so what would this be now? This would be x squared plus 7x equal to 1. If you move that, right? Now let's get the, uh, let's get the, what we will add to make it a perfect square. Coefficient of x is what? 7. Half of it is 7 over 2. Square it. So this is x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 2 all squared equal to 1 plus 7 over 2 all squared. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. Whatever is good for the geese, whatever is good for the goose is good for the gander. Okay, so x plus 7 over 2 all squared equal to 1 plus 49 over 4. Right? So x plus 7 over 2 all squared equal to 4 over 4 plus 49 over 4. x plus 7 over 2 all squared is equal to 49 plus 4 is what? 53. 53 over 4. Right? Okay. Okay, so we have that x plus 7 over 2 all squared is 53 over 4. So x plus 7 over 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 53 over 4. So x plus 7 over 2 is equal to plus or minus, now 53 is a prime number. So we just say root 53 over root 4 which is what? Plus or minus root 53 over 2. Because we want to break this, you know, we want to simplify it, simplifying radicals. So, so x plus 7 over 2 is now plus or minus root 53 over 2. So x will be negative 7 over 2 plus or minus root 53 over 2. Okay, so x will be negative 7 plus or minus root 53 all over 2, because 2 is a common denominator. Right? So let's finish it, let's finish it, let's finish it, let's finish it, let's finish it. So x will be negative 7 plus root 53 over 2, or x is negative 7 minus root 53 over 2. Okay, that's number four. Number five, we come to a, a good case here. Three y, 
3w squared minus w equal to 24. Now, look at this carefully. This is not what we've been doing. This, the coefficient is not unity. It's not 1. The coefficient of w squared is not 1. You know, all these other ones, the coefficient is 1. So we are good. But this one is not 1. So what do we do? Remember what we did in the first video. We have to what? Divide all terms by 3. Right? Remember what we did. So when we do that, divide all terms by 3. So when we do that, this is 3w squared over 3 minus w over 3 equal to 24 over 3. So this is now w squared minus w over 3 equal to 8. Now you ask yourself, it is now the coefficient of w squared is now 1 in it. Then you ask yourself, what is the coefficient of w? It is negative 1 over 3. What is half of it? What, negative 1 over 3 times half is negative 1 over 6. Square it. So you have w squared minus w over 3 plus negative 1 over 6 all squared. Okay, I'm doing this from my head, but don't do it from your head. Write it out. I would, you know, look, I would write it out just like I did in the first video. Coefficient of x, coefficient of w, negative 1 over 3. Half of it, 1 half times negative 1 over 3, which is negative 1 over 6. Square. Square the result, negative 1 over 6 or square. And whatever you do to the left-hand side, you do to the right-hand side. 8 plus negative 1.